today we're going to have a look at making three-dimensional carpet bedding features and uh, I've called this one the lion, the cave and the bedroom because I've used 3D carpet bedding uh, in a number of different shows and uh, it's worked really well. So I'm going to show you how to make three-dimensional objects and plant them up. Uh, hope you enjoy it. So what you need to do when you want to create an animal of any kind, you need a really good side view. If you have a look at this one here in the middle, that looks quite good. Just have a little look at that. And uh, you can see that that might be a good profile. You better get, you better see how the body is formed and you'll be able to shine up onto a, uh, a wall with a light projector and then trace around it. Equally, we could have a look uh, from the back, if you want one from the back or maybe one from the front, uh, that would certainly be quite good. There's a possibility there, got a good one there as well. Um, so there's lots of good shots, so you want a side view and a back view and possibly a front view for to get all the different angles. Okay, so what we've got to do is, once you've identified your picture from the back and from the side, you then got to draw some loops to get the body. So you can see here that just sort of coming around the top is quite flattish. And then you've got to follow it around and you can see that the body sort of goes in around there and that is going to form a loop. Okay, obviously you'd be doing this much bigger on a bigger sheet of paper, but this is one way in which you can do it. And then once you've done that and got your loops, you're going to put some screws around here and then you're going to bend your metal around them to form one of the ribs of the sort of uh, armature, if you like. So you're going to make a series of these circles and uh, some of them will get smaller when you look at the line from the side, some of them are going to be smaller. And once you've got all your loops, then you join them across the top with another piece of metal. So having got your shape marked out, um, then what you can do is to pop some screws in around the outside. And you just want to leave them proud, but just anchored enough so that you can get the metal around them. key thing is to get the extremity points so you make sure you get all the key changes of direction so the change of direction here so I'll pop that one in what we do is where we start put a second one in just to trap wire between the two. That should be enough hopefully. So once you've got your uh, shape marked out of your head to create the first of these sort of ribs if you like, not this kind of rib but a kind of a rib for an armature, you can then start to bend the metal round and so you've got two uh, screws quite close together and then I'll pop the rod in and hook that into there and then what we're going to do I'm going to put my knee on it to help hold it down and we're going to bend that round and you can see that I'm bending that round and you kind of go round it like that round the outside watch it doesn't ping it just pinged a little bit there okay and then we're going to work that round keep the paper out of the way and then bend it round and then we'll just work it round to the beginning until you've got that kind of ring and so I've bent that round you can see that there quite uh, quite clearly and uh, what I've got to do now I could mark it there and there cut that and then that could be welded together or wired together and just overlap them a little bit and then you've got one of the pieces of the armature and what you've got to do is as the lion or whatever it is gets bigger or smaller the loops get bigger or smaller and you just put the three or four together and you make 
your armature uh, as we'll see next. So what you might have is you might have a ring like that, you might have another ring, and you might have a third ring. And once you've done the rings, what you're going to do is you're going to join them up with a piece of metal and just weld it. It's going to be spot welded. And you can see you'll come down here and join that up. Once you've got that on, you can then begin to weld other rods to it to give it a bit more strength. And then obviously you can do the other parts. You've got the the main and different things like that. So you can see we've got the uh, the armature and then uh, they're putting together all the little altenanthra plants there and packing it with moss and compost and gradually taking shape. So you can see that once you've created the armature that the center can be filled with polystyrene and then about the last inch or two around the outside needs to have some sort of blocking compost like a BT blocking compost that will um, you can wet and mold to the shapes uh, then you can plant your plants through like your Altinanthra or Echeveria or Sempervivum and you can hold it in with a bit of moss and if you want to another way of doing it is to add a, a, a layer of chick netting which helps and you can push that around it to hold the plants in place and then keep it watered and the plants will grow and once the roots have filled out underneath the, the two inch square mesh it'll hold itself nicely together. For the bed, what we did was we used um, an old scaffold uh, with wheels on it. And um, what I did was just weld up some eight to 10 millimeter steel and, and made it sort of waver a little bit as if it was a bed. And then I covered it with a two inch mesh, um, mild steel mesh, and just welded it to it. And then we filled it with, again, polystyrene in the top two inches, top 50 mil. Uh, blocking compost and then we put in this case you can see that we put uh, Altinanthra through it you can see the red Altinanthra you can see some sedum spathiophyllum on the front and you can see that for uh, Alan Titchmarsh's head we used Othiophogon and uh, in the back you can see Serfina down the side of the windows so this was a garden designed by one of my students Nigel Playden Nigel's there and you can see it's called, it was called the raised bed and it got a gold medal at Gardener's World. And you can see there on the right, even the drawers with the plants pouring out of them. And I think uh, Alan and Charlie certainly enjoyed this one. And uh, the garden uh, looked really good. So this was a garden we did for Gardener's World Live called Journey to Hope. And in the middle of it, was a big cave with a waterfall on top where the water spilled into the pool below. And here I am uh, welding up the uh, waterfall which goes on top. You can see that the cave has got this big ellipse on the front and an arc round. And there are lots of ribs around the side of it. And what you can do is as you weld one part, you can kind of grab it with the grips and then you can weld, the, to take the, the rod round, weld another bit, then another bit, then another bit, and you keep strengthening up the structure until it's you know strong enough to carry the weight you require. So this is just putting the last bits to the waterfall. In this particular cave, what we did was we covered it with chick netting, and then we covered it with fiberglass. Now with fiberglass, what you have to do is you have two parts, a part A and a part B. So you add like a, a hardener to part B, you put your fiberglass around the object that you want, and then you mix the, the two resins together with the hardener, and then you apply that to the fiberglass. 
and uh, you have to keep sort of jabbing it and, and getting it on there and eventually you can build up a cave-like structure. Now it's not the nicest uh, item to work with fiberglass, you want to be certainly in the open air and uh, you know with your masks etc. But here we can see uh, they're just finishing off a sort of a bit of an interior effect with, with cement and uh, water and a bit of a slurry mixture there to give it a bit of an undercoat uh, and then it will have its final coats later. Here we are putting a bit of moss on and uh, these were just glued on as part of the display. Um, they could have been grown of course over a longer period of time but this was just for a show. Um, but it gave quite an interesting effect. And you can see here that we've used sort of uh, ferns around the side entrance, polypodiums and different things. So the whole of the cave was covered in a, a mesh. You could have put um, some compost into that and then planted into the compost. So lots of different ways of applying the outer part of it. So this time we went for ferns and for a, a sort of a wildflower effect. And here you can see uh, Monty Don just opening Gardener's World Live. He opened it from the garden and you can see the stream there flowing and uh, the pleached hedge in the background. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, there are lots of places for you to go and visit. One of the places is Longwood Gardens. In America, I've not been, but I've seen uh, pictures, and there, there's a, a book all about how they create their 3D objects. Um, so, hope that's given you some ideas and give it a go. And if you haven't got metal, you can always use willow. And see you next time.